What is going on, everyone? It's your guy, Cole Jackson, back here on Road Graders, powered today by BetUS, and we are going to be turning the page, getting ready for this matchup against the Denver Broncos. If you guys are looking forward to this game, if you're looking forward to having the Broncos at the bank, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're new here, drop a comment down below, let me know what you guys think the keys to the game are. And what I want to start it on with is taking a look at Bo Nix, because He's a rookie who had some struggles right out the gate, like quite frankly, um, was pretty heavily criticized for his first few performances, didn't throw a touchdown till um, game four. So three straight weeks where he had no inter no or no touchdowns and four interceptions through three weeks. But since then, he's only thrown one interception and eight touchdowns. So, I mean, a guy that's definitely starting to ascend, but watching his game, it's been pretty easy to see where the struggles have come from and what the best way to attack him is. Um, but before we jump into it, betting lines are already up for Sunday. You can see the Ravens opened at nine and a half favorites. Go over to BetUS, check out the lines, get ready for Sunday. Go use promo code YouTube150. You're going to get 150% sign up bonus. You'll get 125% on your next two deposits. Thank you to BetUS for sponsoring this video. So taking a look at Bo Nix's pass splits on the season when he's been under pressure, 29 for 70 or 29 of 70, 269 yards on those 29 completions. That's 3.8 yards per attempt when you factor in the 70 throws, two touchdowns, two interceptions. And that to me is one of the key. Under pressure has not been good. 3.8 yards per attempt just shows checkdowns and also obviously shorter throws and incompletions last week though had a great game had a fantastic game against carolina three touchdowns 285 yards in that game 7.7 .7 yards per attempt his highest of the year one of his highest a dots with 10.8 pushing the ball downfield just looking significantly better when he was kept clean only six incompletions 275 yards two touchdowns on the six snaps, I believe there was six snaps where he was under pressure because he has scrambles and sacks worked into there. Um, one for four, nine yards, one touchdown. And that touchdown was a throw on the run in the end zone on play action. So kind of worked in his favorite. But basically, I mean, here's the key, folks. Get after Bo Nix. He's a rookie quarterback. He's going to make mistakes. But the problem that I see and the problem that we're going to be taking a look at is he was kept clean on 85% of his throws last week. The Ravens have been struggling with their pass rush. That is the key to winning this game is get it, or at least stopping this offense. Obviously, can win in a shootout, but it's getting pressure on Bo Nix without, um, you know, by, by by getting after this, uh, by getting after him in the in the pass rush game. But the problem I see. Denver Broncos, number one in terms of pass blocking efficiency. So let's go take a look because there is a fundamental flaw in his game when he's under pressure. Something that he does that if you guys are Joe Flacco fans, Joe Flacco did this his whole career, still doing it when he's under pressure. So you're going to see the Bucks here, known for their blitzing. They're going to stack up the line. They're going to get after him and you see someone comes through loose here. They stack up with 2v1 on the right tackle. Free rusher comes right up the middle. Bo's going to have that pressure in his face and right here. See that posture? That right there, all that pressure on the back foot. That's the Joe Flacco special throwing off his back foot and throwing behind the receiver. The, he's one of those quarterbacks, and when he gets pressure, he fades backwards and underthrows more often than not. So here we're going to see against the Steelers. TJ Watt, obviously off that left side against the right tackle here, is going to be the one to get the pressure. And Bo's going to lean back right there, under throw. So that is the type of player he is when he is under pressure. He's He leans back or he takes off. Obviously, there's plenty of him scrambling, but that's kind of his, his flavor of pressure is leaning back on that back foot. So getting that pressure specifically up the middle. See right there, off the back foot interception off the pressure so this is something that stood out across all of his tape that i found just that kind of and a lot of that is you can see right there there's that fading and that's because when he starts to get pressure he wants to be able to escape the pocket right so he wants to be able to go backwards to try and find that scramble lane rather than step up now there's obviously examples of him stepping up for sure but that's kind of why i think this is happening and that's why that pressure up the middle is so key this would be a fantastic game 
for a guy like Justin Matabike or Namde Matabike, sorry, to have a breakout game because he has been down in terms of pass rush productivity, um, especially QB hits. You know, he was number two in the league last year for interior defensive line. So this is a good game for him to get back into that seat right there. Back scramble. I think this one actually gets completed, but you can see right there throwing off that back foot consistently leaning. One team that did give him a lot of problems was the Seattle Seahawks defense in week one. Obviously, part of that is going to be week one rookie quarterback. He had 20, he was pressured 22 times in this game. TTT of 3.01 because he was searching for time. So, you know, when they were using, there's the Mike McDonald special, right? You got the nickel here against the bunch, and he's going to take off right after the snap and disguise that blitz right there. Good timing. That creates the free rusher. Throw off that back foot incompletion and you see how short that falls boom back off that back foot pretty consistent so we'll recognize quite a few of these blitzes here we're going to get leonard williams on the inside this is this is what we need right here this if Namde matabike can do this this weekend watch him just take over i believe that's quinn miners see right there he's going to stack them up right here two hand stack up he's going to read that it's play action and then he's going to take that in outside hand, bring it over, swim move right there. And then right up there, up the middle, thrown off that back foot, almost an interception. But again, leaning off that back foot, under throwing a lot of these balls. Here you're going to get another blitz off the edge. Not blitz, but you know, rush off the edge, under thrown. So see the pressure is coming up his face. And again, crashing down from... The middle of the field leonard williams again right here 99 so he's going to be over top of miners again ends up on the center oh wait leonard williams starts out a wide yeah he does sorry he's going to move inside miners just completely misses him ends up on the ground here but again that pressure is going to come up from the middle of the line and there's that off the back throw off the back foot interception so outside of his first couple starts He's been pretty good against the blitz because that was kind of where my head initially went. How does he do against the blitz? If, if we need to pressure him, let's get after him through the like through that. 58 for 100, 630 yards, 6.3 yards per attempt, three touchdowns, one interception, three sacks compared to eight when he's not split. So quite frankly, pretty good numbers. Um, you know, 58% completion against the blitz isn't necessarily bad. That would be a bad overall completion percentage. But when you factor in just against the blitz, it's actually pretty solid. Really, the only way teams got after him, um, especially later in some of these games, was with the four-man rush. So that is, to me, the biggest concern. And we'll kind of see how Vegas and uh, Vegas and uh, Pittsburgh did that. So obviously, they have two huge edge rushers in Max Crosby and, again, uh, TJ Watt. So there's Max Crosby. He's going to bend around. And so what they're going to do... Raiders defense is going to play a lot of, you know, cover four, cover two. So they're going to drop. He's going to go back into quarter, quarter, half. So you have basically cover four with a four man rush. And you can see right here, they clog up the middle. Knicks has nowhere to go with this ball. They have a nice pressure pocket here with two guys hanging back in the pocket. So the step up lanes aren't there. And Crosby's going to get around the edge and get that sack. So that's really how Vegas got to him. Um, one of the better teams in terms of getting that consistent pressure on him. And a lot of that is doing it through a four-man rush. He's going to get another rep here. You got Max Crosby again on your left side, but they're going to come up the middle with Christian Wilkins on this one. And then, you know, you're seeing it again. That's that's Quinn Miners again right there on your right guard. Look at this weird step by Miners. I should have grabbed the other angle. So he's your right guard right here. He's going to come out and basically turn himself inwards. See right there. Very strange having that post step or the, sorry, his kick step up ahead. You know, we always talk about this. You want that, you want your post step to be ahead of your kick step. He turns like this and Wilkins just die, goes right back around him, brings that pressure up, gets to him. So again, two guys, Christian Wilkins, you know, we know what we know all about Max Crosby and what he can do. And there's Crosby again, causing some of that pressure, getting after him. So they were able to do it with the four man rush. So is Pittsburgh. You can see TJ Watt coming off that left side right there, getting that ankle. So that's kind of what concerns me is seeing a lot of these sack opportunities. Basically, every time Bo Nix has been sacked, it's been from 
Um, it's been from the four man rush. And that's because he is good at getting the ball out. He has a pretty low TTT against the blitz and he obviously can run and scramble and create opportunities to get out, throw the ball away. So his pressure to sack percentage this year is only 11.6, which is actually quite competitive. Um, the only two teams that really gave him issues with that were the Steelers and specifically Vegas, where um, his pa his pressure to sack percentage was like 50%. So basically every time they were getting a pressure, they were getting a sack, but they only had six pressures on that game because of that Denver O-line being solid. But that was kind of the, if you, I actually like that Vegas game as kind of a microcosm because they didn't get consistent pressure, but when they did, it was getting sacks because they were able to use their coverage playing so much zone and behind it to keep Bo Nix in the pocket and then let their pass rushers get home. So that's kind of what I see. And you can see right here, like when he's able to sit in the pocket, he's pushing that ball downfield. And that's really where you're seeing some higher a dot throws. So you're going to see Cortland Sutton come across the middle from the boundary so he's going to start down here and this just turns into a deep crosser and you can see he's got all day back here in this pocket so you know we're basically that was almost like a three and a half ttt against the bucks here the bucks are going to bring the blitz looks like they pick it up pretty well and he's just going to sit and find ball comes out a little quick there but look how well this denver protection picks that up see right there they get the the blitz are here, but they got one, 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 one. So they create that pocket nice and tight. Bo Nix is able to step up right there. Easy plant. Get that ball downfield. He's always looking to push the ball downfield. Again, solid protection. He's going to get that ball out, pushing it downfield. So again, Seattle on the opportunities. See, they're bringing up you know, that's Mike McDonald's defense for you. When he's got time, he's pushing that ball against Carolina here on the weekend that just passed in that game. Again, look how well they're picking that up. And, you know, I like how he stands tall because he's actually going to get right here. They loop 52 all the way around, and he's going to get a little bit of a lane at Knicks, but Knicks is just going to stand tall here. See that confidence in the pocket with a defender running at him, getting that ball into a good spot. So those are the opportunities I see in this game. This has to be... A football game where the Baltimore Ravens pass rush is effective. They have to find a way to get it done. My biggest concern is I don't know how effective their blitz game is going to be. And, you know, we kind of saw that at the end of the game. They went blitz heavy. They blitzed on their last six plays that led to the Cedric Tillman touchdown last week. And, you know, I actually like the approach because Jameis Winston was struggling when he was blitzed specifically. So I liked the approach, but... You know, we have a quarterback that's shown, you know, pretty good ability for a rookie against the Blitz game. And so this is a game, like I said, Namde Matabike. Got to make a statement. Got to see something from Odafe Owe. He's got to win one-on-ones. And that's my biggest concern with this pass rush. They haven't had a guy that's just been able to kind of step up and, and wreck a game so far. And that's what I think the biggest misses on the defense you know we had games last year where matabike did take over we had games where jadavion Clowney was unblockable there were games early in this year where kvn was causing all sorts of havoc so they need someone to be that guy travis jones battling this net, this ankle injury michael pierce is now on ir it's going to be difficult to create those one-on-ones for matabike without that dominant nose tackle that can push the pocket but someone on the edge needs to step up yannick nagakwe kvn Odafe Owe, who's it going to be? If you guys enjoyed this breakdown, if you're excited for this weekend, hit that like button for me. Hit subscribe if you're new here. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think is the key to this game. And as always, thank you to BetUS for powering this video.